Welcome back to the Fab Forums. On this episode, I build a cart for the coop so I can roll that bad boy around. back to the fab forms on this episode I want to make a car dolly talked about it in the last episode been working on the coupe and I really want a way to move this thing around um, while I'm kind of working on it be able to get under it load it in the trailer and take it somewhere if I want to to have you know windows tinted or the outside of the body cleared or whatever I don't want to spend a ton of time doing this I kind of want to knock it out pretty quick and I don't want to make it I don't want to spend a ton of money and use a bunch of my materials to do it. So, the plans are, I've got some dollies, and I've got some extra metal that was out of some scaffolding. I think it's like one inch tube. And I think that's going to get the job done. This thing weighs basically nothing. If I had to guess, probably a couple hundred pounds. So, it doesn't have to be crazy robust. Just needs to be enough to get the job done safely, roll it around. I think, you know, I'd like to be able to put the K member back under it, kind of work on the suspension, maybe put the rear end back under it. So it needs to be strong enough for that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, once I kind of get all the body stuff done and it's time to put the motor and stuff in there, I'll take it off this dolly and, uh, you know, I won't have to worry about holding up all that weight. Let's see, Let's see the casters I got. And they're like, uh, th what are they? 300 pound piece, maybe more than that. And they're like the rubberized kind. That way I don't mark up my floor. One of the things I want to do real quick though, get, I get a lot of people saying, hey, why are you starting this project when you haven't finished your other projects? And I mean, for the most part, my other projects are finished. So I had somebody kind of recommend doing a walk around on the C10, the Goose, the bibster and just kind of either show that it's completely done or where I'm at. So we'll start off with what I call grandma's C10. So this is my 1980 step side C10. Uh, I did some videos on it, had the whole front clip off, the whole bed off and went through the entire interior on this thing, painted the frame rails, um, just went through and did redid everything. So put new grill, New headlights, new marker bezels, uh, new badging on this thing, new mirrors, new handles. Replaced a lot of the hardware on the bed in here. That stuff was just kind of old, wore out. Um, it's got new trim. I knocked this build out in probably, was three videos, it probably took me a total of maybe two months so all new door panels door rest door pulls locks uh, actuators handles bezels new switches all the way around can't remember if i replaced the window motors or not uh, all new rubber around the doors and the cab itself so all this is new rubber new seat cover new carpet fix the Fix the this thing had like a these trucks are bad for people getting in and out of them they kind of pull on the handle so I had a little wobble to it you got to basically disassemble the whole column tighten up some bolts in there but it's got a new dash in it new headliner in it new light uh, new belts so the belts were faded put new belts in there what else new floor mats think oh new uh new door stoppers and all new hinges so i put all brand new hinges in it paint them to match the truck let's see here pop, pop the hood on it so under the hood i didn't really do much i wanted to keep it as original as possible 
just went in here and kind of painted everything. Uh, I did replace this fender well because the battery acid had rusted it out up front. Went ahead and replaced that whole thing, kind of cleaned up the wires, painted the firewall, coated the brake booster and stuff and cleaned that up. But yeah, just, um, just tried to keep it as original and nice as I possibly could. So I drive the heck out of this thing. I actually take the trash to the trash dump all the time in it and just use it as a shop truck. Obviously, you know, I don't want to tear it up, so I'm very careful with it. But, um, you know, like I said, it's all, everything's painted underneath. Even the gas tanks, like I painted all that stuff while I had it apart. The one thing I think I do want to do, and I, actually I will do, is I'm gonna paint these wheels. So these are just factory steel wheels, and I've got new center caps for them. I'm just waiting to put the center caps on until, you know, I disassemble it and paint the wheels. So that'll probably happen in the spring when it warms up. You know, I'm up there washing it or something. I might kind of do that, but truck's done. I drive it all the time. All right, so let's move to the Goose. This is my twin turbo Fox body i've had this thing gosh probably 25 or 20 30 years i guess close to 30 years and it's i mean it's done ain't nothing i mean it's dirty i need to vacuum it out and stuff but i mean the car's car's basically done i mean there's little stuff like i need to i'd like to kind of fill these vents but i mean it's not like video worthy content right making a little vent cover uh, I have been putting some sound deadener in here, just trying to quieten it down a little bit, fill up some holes in the back, and I do plan to carpet this. But like I said, that's not really video worthy content, right? Got a mount for my CO2 for the boost controller. And I drive this thing all the time. Well, I say all the time. I drive this car a good bit. Um, Motor's done, I mean, everything's ready to go. Now, when somebody says you need to finish the goose, maybe they're referring to the fact that last time I took it to the dyno, it only made two pounds of boost and we couldn't get it to make any more boost. I fixed the problem and have actually turned the boost up on the street. Thing is about this car, it's Big Stuff 3, it's basically self-tuning, um, I can data log with it so I can come back and look at the logs, see if it's lean rich. I can kind of adjust the tune up as I go. And it doesn't have to be specifically tuned on a dyno. Basically, I can tune it on the street dyno. Matter of fact, when I took it to the dyno last time, I think we made an extra 15 horsepower on the dyno based on, you know, I self tuned it before I took it. And then we kind of dialed it in just a little bit on the dyno and it made, I don't know, I think we've got it to make an extra 15 horsepower on the same exact setup, same boost level. So, I mean, it was almost dialed. We did work a lot on the idle, off idle cranking, that sort of thing, which it needed some help on, but she's ready to go. Now, like the C10, there's some things I would like to do to it. I do want to replace the rear control arms on this thing. So that'll probably happen too. There again, though. Not really uh, film worthy content. All right, now the elephant in the room. So this thing. So this car, believe it or not, is about 90% finished. 85% finished, we'll go there, just to kind of give it a safe estimate. So the way that the front is, it's not going to change. That's going to be, that's all that's left. There's no hood. There's no body panels going on this thing. Uh, in the future, I may do a faux grill shell, like an old hot rod grill shell that kind of frames the turbo setup, but I'm not worried about that now. And that's not something that I would consider needs to be done nor for this thing to be finished. Um, really the only thing that needs to be done on this car is to finish the doors. Some of the interior panels. So like there's a panel missing there. Um, the thing about the panels would be easy. I could film content on that. The thing is the doors need to be addressed right now. And the problem with the doors is creatively, I don't know exactly what I want to do with them. 
And so really, until I figure that out, like I'm not gonna, I can't make content around it. And I don't wanna sit on my hands either. I wanna, you know, while I'm kind of thinking about it, running ideas through my head, you know, I wanna be working on some other things. So the doors, and I need to make a trunk lid for this thing. I had one made and my brother-in-law uh, thought it was scrap metal and basically used it as a test piece on something else he was doing. So I gotta remake it. And I'll have to do hinges and stuff like that. And that'll, that could be some content that could be made. And I may jump back and forth, kind of work on the COVID coupe for a little bit and then kind of jump to this thing and maybe finish up that back panel. You know, and then obviously I got like little stuff I need to do in here, but I mean, man, it's, it's uh, pretty much done. If you missed the videos, we drove it. So I got some suspension stuff I need to do. I will make videos on that. Still trying to figure that out as well. Like it or not, Bipster's close to done. I mean, I gotta rivet the dash. I, I mean, I guess there is stuff I have to do on this one. This one, I wouldn't classify as finished, but the other two, that one and that one, are, they're done. I mean, I ain't, I'm not doing anything to those. Now I would like to, probably in the spring, I'm gonna jump back on the shop and start making some more videos on me finishing the shop. So the shop has definitely got neglected. I want to kind of finish up all this stuff. I want to do something with all the walls, whether that's cover them or murals or something. We're going to get rid of all this yellow foam. But that'll be something I address uh, when it warms up a little bit in the springtime. And I just feel like doing like a full shop spring cleaning. I'll be sure to bring you along. So we're back to this one. Came out here today and put a little body filler in here and i'll go back and through and sand all that up but I mean, i'm nowhere near ready to paint this thing yet so as for a dolly for this thing i think i want it to be about the same height it is maybe a little bit taller and i want it to be able to clamp onto the um what do they call those pinch welds at the bottom of these of these fox bodies so on all these fox bodies at the bottom underneath the rocker it's got a pinch weld right here and I plan on straightening this one out. You know, I think these things are made to jack on, but most people mess them up. And, you know, I never recommend putting a jack under these, but I want to make it to where it kind of mounts to these pinch welds, front and back. And then that way we can kind of do body work, paint work, whatever, and that's not going to be affected. Uh, it's not going to be in the way so much. And I can also work underneath it. I plan to do some nice subframe connectors and stuff like that on this thing and I don't want that to be in my way. So let's get to it. I'm gonna start cutting parts. Uh, kind of try to have a parts list and cut as much as I can before I start assembling it. I do need to be careful because I'm pretty sure that's galvanized and so I don't wanna be sucking a bunch of that smoke once we start welding on it.
So that's kind of what I'm after right there. So you can see it lines up with the pinch welds. Um, I ground off most of the most of the coating. I hit a couple spots that wanted to smoke on me, but for the most part, I cleaned everything up. So now, what I want to do is I'm going to make. I'm going to try to make some kickers that come up like this. Let's see, can you see that? So some kickers that come up probably have a flat plate on the inside. And then I may drill some holes, put a plate on the outside, and then bolt the two together. The inside plate will be the only one that's welded to the, uh, to the frame itself. And the tube will actually sit right under the pinch weld. So it'll kind of set the height. And then cut a bunch of these. So in a perfect world, there'll be gussets here and this way. So, now it's going to take some measurements on the pinch weld. Like I said, I may raise the carp just a little bit. Figure out how high I want that to be. Really, on this setup, the lower, the better. It's just less likely to topple over. So this is what I came up with to basically fasten it to the car. So the big plate goes behind the pinch weld and sits on the floor, which actually support the weight. And then out here, I can just basically tighten this bolt down and kind of sandwich it on there just to make sure that it's not gonna go anywhere, which it can't really go anywhere. But it'll also allow me to pick the car up and this should stay attached once all these are kind of fastened on. So I got the back one tacked on this side, front one tacked, and then I'll end up putting some gusts in here. I'll probably have to shorten these up just a smidge. That's it. Finish these two and uh, tack some gussets on and we'll see if it works. All right, she's uh, she's supported. And I've got everything tightened down, so I just tightened all these up, cinched down on that pinch weld, and I think we're about ready to see if she'll dance. So really, this could go one of like three ways. It could just roll out here, perfect, no problem. The whole frame could coll collapse and the car be on the ground, which would suck or like it tips over or something. So anyway, one way to find out what's gonna happen is take the jack stands out, 
We'll see if we can roll it around. Well, I would say that's uh, a success. So you kind of get an idea of the front from a different angle. Um, it's cool as these are all full caster wheels with locks. So I can, I can lock them if I want to. dig it so there you go a little dolly for the covid coop it's gonna make things nice i can kind of roll that thing out clean up if i'm grinding a bunch i can roll it outside if i'm gonna do sanding or painting or whatever and i don't want to do it in here the other good thing is i can roll it back there kind of swap spots and uh that's my main fab area that's where all my stuff is it just makes it easier if i have it all together so anyway as always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys next week. Y'all go do work, son.